All right, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Mike Walsh. I'm a software engineer at Peterson Technologies. And uh, today I'm going to talk to you about improving the Accumulate user, user experience. Um, Accumulate has been around for a while. Uh, there, a lot of features have been developed, a lot of functionality, um, a lot of great work has been done. Uh, but I think over time, you know, we kind of need to revisit things and improve them, make them easier for users. Um, so this talk is kind of kind of talk about how, you know, why we want to improve the user experience, how we're doing it, um, and kind of, you know, mention some things in 2.0 where the user experience has been improved. Um, yeah, so I'm going to give an overview about, you know, why we want to improve the user experience. I'm going to talk about different um, aspects of Accumulo where we've improved the user experience. So who is the uh, typical uh, Accumulo user? I'd have to say that they're typically advanced developers and administrators. Um, I mean, typically, they're skilled enough that they could easily contribute to, to Accumulo if they wanted to. They could become committers with enough um, you know, contributions. So you know, it, it's, improving the experience isn't about you know, you know, dumbing down Accumulo for users that don't know what they're doing. It's more, I, I find it more about we want to save our users time. Um, a lot of our users, they like, if they run into a problem. They spend, they can spend like a couple hours to a day to even a week, uh, trying to figure out the problem. And if we can kind of, you know, lessen those those cases, so they don't need to do that. I mean, even though they're advanced and they know what they're doing, you know, we, we want to make it so, that, you know, they don't have to spend a ton of time on Accumulo. I mean, they they have their own applications they're typically working on, and that should typically be their focus. And uh, so basically, you know. User experience, in, in my view, is just you know reducing the complexity of, of Accumulo to save our users time. So, reducing complexity is kind of difficult. Um, software projects, I would say, open source and closed source projects, uh, you know, they just the number of features and code just increases over time, and the, the the complexity of that code increases, and it's really hard to kind of reduce that complexity. Um, you know, there's more motivation to add features than to like refactor things. Um, it's just the way like open source projects work. Um, so, I, like, I'd like to see with Accumulo kind of, uh, you know, with less reducing this complexity, kind of not just adding features. I mean, if they're critical and they're new, like, there's some great features in 2.0, um, new features in 2.0, but we also need to kind of do do that refactoring. And I. And I think this is kind of important for the health of projects. Um, this, uh, this chart kind of shows how, like, I feel like uh, projects, you know, they have a certain amount of resources, and their code is, is, is a certain amount of complexity. And, um, you know, and I feel like every, you know, we judge projects based off of if they're, like, a big project or a small project, and everyone wants to be a big project. But, like, it's really more about, like, you know, to me, a big project has more resources, but if it's, if, if it's, way complex, it still has a possibility of failing. And then there's these small projects, like, you know, there's these Linux command line tools. That they only have, like, one or two developers working on them, but they're really simple, and they'll probably be around forever because they're not very complex. So, I mean, I, I don't know where Accumulo fits in this, but it's just, I just, like, we got to, like, realize, you know, you know if we want to increase complexity, you know, we got to add more resources to it. Or if our resources are kind of going down, maybe we need to figure out a way to decrease complexity in Accumulo. And I think that will like make Accumulo, you know, stay healthy for for years. So if you want to uh, decrease complexity, you know, what do you, you know, what do you want to refactor? What do you want to improve? And like what I found with Accumulo is that users use different aspects of Accumulo. No one's using all parts of Accumulo, uh, but there are things that that everyone everyone uses, like administration, metrics, API, documentation. So, I mean, I'd have to say, like, not that we can't simplify other things, but if you want to, like, you know, the low-hanging fruit are these, like, common core um, features. But when we simplify Accumulo, um, we don't want to make, like, life difficult for our users. We don't want them to, you know, have to change their code for every minor release because we're just, we're making it better, you know, like you're making it better, but then you have to spend hours trying to update your code. So we're, we're following semantic version. So even though we're making these improvements, uh, we're following semantic versioning, which kind of, you know, tells you when things might break. And we're, we're trying to minimize like how, you know, we're not just dropping deprecated API immediately, giving you time to make changes. And, uh, and I think that that helps, you know, 
So chemo is going to improve, simplify, get better, but it's not this um, you know, drastic change to users, and, and hopefully we actually make life easier for users. Um, so another way to kind of uh, make the user experience better is just realize that Accumulo shouldn't do everything. Um, we ha like I, I actually really like our monitor, but it it, it has you know uh, metrics in it and it has kind of log collection and I, and I think that's good. But like we don't want to be like, well, let's make log collection better. Let's add more stuff to the monitor. Um, we th that should be done by external tools. So you know we keep what we have, but we should find ways where um, you know, Accumulo is doing things that other tools are doing better and kind of, you know, make it easy for people to hook up an external tool to Accumulo. But we don't want to, like, bind users to a certain tool. Um, we don't want to make it, like, you know, to use Accumulo, you have to use this, this uh, you know, metrics and monitoring tool. Because these tools change over time. You know, they go in and out of favor. Um, so, yeah. And another way we can kind of limit complexity is through code reviews. Uh, we've been doing that for a while. We, we're not officially um, uh, reviewed and commit, but a, a lot of stuff is reviewed before it's committed. And I think that's creating a higher standard. Uh, things aren't getting into Cumulo that are like undocumented, half complete. Um, you know, it, we really need to like, you know, stuff that gets added, it needs to be supported for potentially for years, so it should, it should go in in a good state. I mean. Things uh, it creates a if 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 things get in and they're not complete, then it creates a burden for for developers down the road. So um, next, I'm going to talk about uh, you know how we've improved the user experience for administration for 2.0. So accumulative administration it's difficult. Um, there's uh, multiple dependencies, um, multiple commands to start up per node because of these dependencies. And like in a perfect world, we wouldn't have all these dependencies, but we also get a lot of benefits from basing Accumulo off of HDFS and Zookeeper. Uh, so uh, like uh, looking at the installation instructions for Accumulo, um, there's really not much improvement there. And I, I found actually the improvement is, is through automation. So instead of like simplifying our instructions, we need to automate them. And there's many ways to do this. Uh, you know, I'm going to talk about Uno and Muchos, which is a way that kind of that that I've helped create um, that that does the automation. But there's many, but you know, it's kind of outside of Accumulo, and there's other outside tools that can do this. But I guess what I want to take away is not from this is not you need to use Uno and Muchos. Just you should find some way to automate your workflow, um, either using a, another tool or building your own, uh, because it just it really saves time for users and kind of uh, you know minimizes problems. Uh, in, in development environments, like people have things set up incorrectly. Um, yeah, so here's some of the benefits to automation. Like your, your installs are, are fast. You can repeat them. Um, if you, you, know, you want to test, if you found a bug and you want to you know, do another test, you can, uh, you, you can set it up again. And um, it really, it's really helped for uh, Accumulo development. And when, when someone does, so you know, everyone's kind of using Uno and Muchos. And if someone finds a bug, they fix it in the, in the code base, and it's kind of fixed for everyone. So you don't have these situations where when if people install things by hand, you know, they, they, they will kind of run into their problem on their own, and then they have to talk to people and, I mean, and try to get help. And so it's just, I feel like the, this automation of the administration has really um, sp uh, sped up development. It's easy to launch test clusters. Um, and you can be more confident about upgrades if, if you automate your Accumulo installation. So um, Accumulo 2.0, uh, it makes this automation a lot easier. We've simplified the tarball a lot. We've gone, we've decreased the number of total files. There's, there's less configuration files. There was some changes to the configuration, um, like the actual, we went from a XML format to a properties format. And they, and they have changed a little bit, but a, a big change is, and Keith brought this up, is just the, the reduction in the number of scripts. Hopefully, in, in the future, now that you know, we've kind of done this, this big change in 2.0, these, these will stay constant. So you can you know, write uh, your, your automations, any, any automation off of like a really constant tarball. 
So I, I mentioned this before, but um, I'm going to give a brief introduction to Uno and Muchos. Um, they're actually under the Fluo project. Um, they, they each have their own repo. You clone them. And uh, like with Uno, you just run Uno fetch Accumulo. It pulls the tarballs. And then Uno setup Accumulo will actually set up uh, Hadoop Zookeeper and Accumulo locally. Um, and then it's really easy in the configuration to kind of change versions and uh, you know stop and start Accumulo. And then Muchos is a little bit different. Like, well, Uno is one for a single node, like local development. Muchos is, is for running on a test cluster. It launches, a, it'll, you can pick the size of your cluster and kind of the versions of Accumulo and Hadoop. And then it launches the cluster in EC2. And then uh, using like a, a launch command. And then you just run Muchos setup and it copies over configuration and scripts. And uh, using Ansible, it actually sets up the entire cluster and has Accumulo running at the end of it. So here's uh, just kind of the, some of the features of Uno and Muchos. Um, I guess it, it really makes it's, it makes it easy to switch between different versions of Hadoop, of Accumulo, Hadoop, and Zookeeper. Um, these are these might be really good if you want to test out like Accumulo 2.0, you know, before you actually add it to your own scripts. Um, so, and uh, actually another interesting thing is they both set up a metric service, and I'm going to be talking about uh, this kind of this metric service in the later on in the presentation. So another thing for administration for 2.0 is uh, a Docker image was created. And uh, this image, it's been tested in, uh, in Mesos Marathon. Uh, I mean, just some basic testing. I got Accumulo running. But I think more needs to be done before it's actually, before I push it to people who use in production. I mean, like things like restarts, logging, debugging, they haven't really been figured out. And then I think, you know, running Accumulo and Docker, it works, but, you know, if you're not running Hadoop and Zookeeper, does that give you that much, and which should you? And I actually personally don't really know what to tell people yet if they should use those. I, when I ran the test, I actually had Hadoop and Zookeeper outside of Docker. So here's a little intro to the, um, the Accumulo Docker image. Um, it, the entry point is actually the Accumulo command and the Accumulo tarball. So it's, it's very simple. When you actually use the Docker image, you can, you can pretty much run any command. You can, you can run a Cumulo version, and it'll give you the version of a Cumulo. Like you could just, so it, it, it's very flexible. As, as a Cumulo changes, you know, it, this, this Docker image doesn't need to be updated too much. Um, the, the second uh, command shows kind of how to run a, a Cumulo T server. Keith kind of mentioned that dash O. Uh, that's, that's how you kind of tell the, the T server where to connect to. And um, we, we were able to do like a limited set of properties because we added this upload Accumulo props to, to option to Accumulo init. And so that will, in your Accumulo properties file, that'll upload a lot of extra properties to Zookeeper when you're doing your initialization. So uh, for, for, I mean, this is kind of future work that I would kind of like to see for, this is not for 2.0, but this is just stuff that could be done in the future, is that there's a lot of errors with Accumulo that require like humans to kind of you know, intervene. And um, currently, like users, they're not really given much help. They just have to Google, it, Google for it, look at the documentation. It can take, if they haven't encountered that error, it could take a while to figure you know, out what to do. And I think that the response some, sometimes can change over time also. So, you know, um, but in the future, what we could do is we could maybe, you know, give every exception or, or error like a potential code, and then people could then go to the website and kind of check out like what to do for that. And then, you know, over time, we could kind of improve those instructions and make it really easy in case users do, you know, run into a problem with the Cumulo, you know, how to, how to get through it. Because I, I think if you could take, you know, some of these times when users have problems, someone's already worked through that issue. And if you can make it, you know, instead of a day, they have to figure it out. It takes 10 minutes. That would be awesome. So next, um, I'm going to talk about how, you know, documentation has been improved for 2.0. So um, before 2.0, we had, a, like, a, a single page um, documentation. And uh, it was written in ASCII doc, and it was just published to the website. So you'd have to commit to the 
it lived in the Cumulo main source repo. You had to change it there, build it, and then commit it again to the website. For 2.0, we moved that source out to actually the website. It's now written in Markdown. And instead of being a single page, it's multiple pages. And uh, there's also like a search bar where you can search um, the documentation. So it, and it, and it has a, uh, some linking uh, functionality that I'm gonna talk about later. So here's the old documentation. It had this um, really long outline, and it was really kind of hard to see, you know. I mean, if you wanted to read it from start to finish, it was great, but like, it was hard to kind of go in there and find what you were looking for. I mean, you could use the browser find to look for stuff, but it, it really wasn't organized well. Um, and being a single page, when you search for stuff for Accumulo, it never really came up because it's just one HTML page. Uh, and here's the new documentation. There now is like this like drop down nav bar. So like there's different sections like getting started, development, administration, troubleshooting. When you click on them, they show other pages. And then there's uh, so each so now the documentation is split up into different pages, and you can now easily link between them. And I'm gonna, I'm going to kind of show how linking's been improved. See linking's tr tricky because we want to release new versions of the documentation. So we want to copy the old documentation to a new directory, and the links are gonna change because you know, the version number has changed. So one thing that um, we've done with the new documentation is in the markdown, there's like a liquid tag where you can just, for, for like a, the Java API, you can just specify the full Java class name, and that'll produce a link. And so when the, when the documentation is copied over, there's no changing that's needed, and so those, those links are now easier to do, and they're easier to ma maintain that now we have like links all over the documentation. Links to, uh, this is Javadoc. We have better links to other pages in the documentation. Like if you want to reference, if you're, if one documentation page is talking about something, it might want to say, hey, check out this other page over there. And uh, you know, so th these links really help users um, you know, navigate the documentation. And then we also uh, have links for Accumulo properties. All the um, Accumulo server and client properties, they each have a page. And when you click on one of these links, it'll actually take you to that page and to the actual point where uh, the property is. So it's, it's helpful if you're talking about a feature and you don't, you don't really want to describe the property in full, you just, because that's, that's what the other documentation is for. So you just mention the, the, the property and people can, if they want to learn more about it, they can go to the actual official documentation. So um, for, uh, for, for 2.0, to prove the user experience, we also kind of looked at the API. So the API, I mean, I don't want to be like too critical of it. I mean, like people, we need to get things done. And so it was just, it, you know, it was developed and it like works well. But it's the, I think my issue isn't the functionality of it, it's just more, it can be confusing to new users. There's terms like um, instance, when you really you just want like a connector or a client, why are you creating an instance? Um, we mentioned like one of the things is like you create a new Zookeeper instance and that's really where you're, you're connecting to to like get the information about your Cumulo um, cluster. It's not, it's confusing to people I think because really you're making a connection to Cumulo. Um, how the implementation is done should be kind of hidden from users. And then even like the name connector, it's a, it's a good name but it's just very generic. Like if you have other connector code, you could potentially have class conflicts. Um, and then there was issue, I mean, Keith brought some of this up. There's just issues with the, the client configuration file. It didn't have user and password. So in 2.0, we, we really tried to uh, you know, improve this, this client. So here's kind of uh, an example of, of uh, creating an Accumulo client in code. And the top is 1.9, the bottom is 2.0. And then here's one uh, using configuration. So um, I'm going to talk about how uh, metrics have been improved. Um, so in Cumulo uh, 1, uh, we, you had metrics in the monitor, which were which are good, but they're limited to the past two hours. 
and they only have about eight or 10 graphs. And so it's really useful if you're like monitoring a cumulo in the moment, but you know, going back in time, it's, it's kind of difficult. Uh, and that, if you want to do that, you, you can report metrics using JMX and, and Hadoop metrics too. However, there's really no documentation for setting that up. It's kind of like you're on your own to do that. Um, I don't know many, I'm sure people have done it, but you have to be really an advanced user to kind of like look into that library, figure out how it works, set up your own metrics database and viewer. It's, it's, just, it's, just, it's a lot of work for someone new to Accumulo or just, just starting using Accumulo. Um, so in, in 2.0, we've, uh, uh, we've kept you know, the monitor and we still have these same interfaces, but what we've done is kind of like through Uno and Muchos and then, then there's also instructions, kind of made it easier for people to set up that external metric service. Um, with, uh, with Uno and Muchos, you can, when you're setting up your Cumulo, it'll actually also um, pull down the, uh, we're using, the current implementation is InfluxDB and Grafana, but we could, you, know, you could work with other tools. Uh, it'll pull those down, set them up, and actually have a Cumulo send metrics to them. Um, so you know, where this is nicer than, than the current monitor is just that the fact of like, you, know, you can have metrics for 30 days. So you can see what's going on. I mean, the, the, the metrics are very similar to the monitor. Um, there is a couple extra ones. Uh, but it just really the benefits that long-term storage of metrics and being able to drill down, you can start creating more interesting graphs uh, with that existing metrics. Um, but there's, uh, there's potentially more work that um, could be done for this. Um, you know, right now, Cumulo is really bound to Hadoop metrics too. Um, we could, you know, generalize how Cumulo uses metrics, its own, the metrics API, and be able to have different implementations like a Hadoop 2 metrics implementation, a Drop Wizard implementation, even Prometheus. So, you know, it'd, it'd be nice if we got to the point where like Accumulo wasn't, Accumulo uses these tools, but it wasn't exactly bound to it, because in the, in the Accumulo code, it would call this metrics API, and you could hook in different implementations. And then that would allow, um, you know, as, because I feel like these, the, the metrics database and viewers, they've kind of, there's a lot of innovation there, a lot of new tools come out, some kind of fade away. Um, and, it, and, and like while we're encouraging people to use these tools, we don't want to get a situation where people are stuck because you know, they're probably not just running a cumulative, they're probably use, you know, have other tools. It would be great if they could just use, you know, if, if they've picked Graphite, you know, the, you know, we should be able to work with Graphite. Um, so that's kind of a future uh, work that could be done. So um, in summary, uh, Accumulo 2.0, I, hopefully it provides a better user experience. Um, we've improved a lot of things that, that make, uh, that are common issues for users like administration, documentation, API, and metrics. But there's definitely like a lot, of, a lot more work to do. Um, you know, Docker, air codes, metrics, API. And we, we also kind of, you know, we want to keep on refactoring and limit the complexity of Accumulo so that it you know, maintains it, it stays a healthy project. There's my contact info, and if there's any questions. Yeah, um, Kubernetes seems a little difficult to set up on your own. I mean, there's, there's, there's Elastic, um, or EC2, like AWS has like a Kubernetes service. Yeah, but I, I haven't got to the point of setting, I mean, I've, I've looked at it, and, but it's just, yeah, it's just kind of hard. I'm sure it'll work fine, I mean, it, it's pretty, you know, once you're in Docker, I think it's going to be okay. Yeah.